My name is Mark Kenyon, and I love white-tailed deer. I love studying them, too far, hunting them, and yes, eating them. Whitetails are found across a wider swath of America than any other large mammal, which is why I've set out for the ultimate whitetail tour, exploring the wildly different terrains these deer call home and the unique characters that hunt them there. On your love all the time. This week, I'm headed south to the hills and hollers of Arkansas's public lands, where I'll be trading in my new school approach for that of the old, learning the backwoods techniques of working saddles and still hunting from longtime mountain hunters James Lawrence and meat eater crew member Clay Newcomb. I'll pack into the backcountry by mule, spend a day learning from Clay, and then set out on my own to see if I can kill a backwoods buck myself in three short days. That's a two mule trailer and an old one. So are you hanging on to it like for sentimental reasons? Like you like the fact it's from the 70s? Mark, I'm a seventh generation Arkansan. Arkansas is one of the poorest states in the entire country. Seven generations is not enough time to amass family wealth. <laughs> enough to upgrade this, the you can tell a lot about a man, about his expendable income, by his mule trailer. Welcome to Arkansas. So much of what I do in, in my hunting style is, is like the next big technology, the next big idea. I'm very like forward thinking. Yeah. Sometimes though I, I worry that I get too wrapped up in like what's next, what's new. Yeah. You seem to be the perfect antidote to that because it seems like you're looking more of the past for inspiration. There is a time in my hunting when I go backwards on purpose, and that is going into national forests where deer densities are less. We're not going there to kill a trophy buck. We're not going in there to see 20 deer a day. We're going in there to do something different on purpose. And I choose to do that for many reasons. Uh, well, a lot of it because of James Lawrence. For real, I, I've been inspired by James. James is a, a mentor of yours that you met a decade ago or, or something like that. Is yeah, that right? I, I just consider him a really, really close mentor and friend. Do you think he'd be open to us visiting him before we take off? Yeah, let's go see him. Clay's been telling me that there's there's some bucks running around these hills. Oh yeah. That you've you found them over the years, huh? I found a few. Let's take a look. <whistles> these are all just in the mountains and hills around here. Yep. So no need to leave home, huh? All the, no, all no. the deer hunting you could ever want right here. This is incredible. I would say 95% of those deer were killed on public land. And were most of them were killed on the ground in a time when there's way more deer now than there were in the 70s and 80s Whoa. and even 90s. You can't go into a guy's trophy room and start adding up inches and think you understand oh, yeah. different worlds. how good a hunter they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I can tell you, growing up in northern Michigan, we have a little family deer camp and a wall in the cabin with antlers across it. Most people go there and they see all these spikes and four keys and six pointers and they kind of chuckle at them. But I look at that and I see incredible stories. I see yeah. a lot of hard work and yeah. I see something I'm real proud of. Yeah. So I can look at this and see a whole lot of something special. I have a hard time figuring out what I should be expecting hunting here for the first time. Should I be taking a crack at the first deer I see? You know, seeing this, this makes me think like maybe I should hold off until this guy comes strolling through. Before. We've got four days. Four days. What would four you? Four days. What would you be thinking about? I'd take the first legal one I could find. Yeah. When you say still hunting, you know, I've heard people talk about that, but that's not something I grew up doing. How, what's the right way to go about that kind of hunt? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, pay attention when you're out hunting and you see a buck coming. He'll just walk, but he'll stop on a regular basis. He'll take so many steps and stop. Well, when you're in a terrain where you have to make noise, just do it like he did. Just right. don't take off walking. Just make as little a noise as you can and stop on a regular basis. Do you start somewhere and let the, the sign tell you where to yeah, go? That's basically what I do. 
I go to an area and then I, when I get into it, it just, the sign just kind of tells me how we're going to work it, whether I'm going to spend a lot of time sitting or spend a lot of time walking. Okay. That's the thing about the still hunting is that you're using as many clues as you can. It's like hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're listening for squirrels. You're listening for blue jays. You're, yeah. you're just on red alert. The satisfaction you get from still hunting, if you play your cards just right and you get a shot, and I don't care if it's a doe or a buck, it's just doing it on your own like that. It'll, it'll surprise you the pleasure you get out of it. There's value in the way that you do something. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so easy these days to get sucked into that more prevalent way of looking at things and big bucks and food plots and trail camera pictures and all that. And, and I'm just as guilty as the next person about Me too. getting excited about that stuff. Me too. Me too. Killing one down here like this, it just, it just means more. Yeah. Well, thank you, James. I can't tell you how much, much we appreciate this. Pleasure. I hope it works. We'll see you back here in a couple days, hopefully. Okay. Use your saddle. So we'll pack all our gear in here. You can put a 300 pound bear in these panniers quartered up. I mean, you know, here's a perfect illustration of the two different worlds we come from, Clay. I am familiar with panniers. Are you? Yeah, but we ran panniers on little road bikes. We were right <laughs> through that. Could you haul out a bear with those? You know, we never tried it. You probably want to carry your gun because we're going to just be walking and might kill a deer. This is so traditional because there was a time when we couldn't have driven a truck here with a trailer. We would have left from civilization and we'd have had a string of horses and mules and come back in here for two months. It is no doubt a nostalgic hat tip to the long hunters of America. This is our new home, Mark. This reference might fall in deaf ears. It's got a little bit of the Lord of the Rings vibe to it. Okay. Like there could be elves popping up from behind these trees. <laughs> That's the first for me in Arkansas. So Clay, what I'm kind of hoping to do here with you, if you're willing, is even more so than trying to kill a deer right now, I'd really like to just like suck everything I can out of your mind as far as how to hunt a deer here. I'm hoping I can learn something now that then's going to put me in a position to tonight and the rest of the week kind of try to do it myself. So, for sure, we're going to pass through four or five gaps this morning. Saddles. Saddles. Yeah. Gaps. And I'm, I'm looking for any indication of deer moving through those that's fresh. And whether that's a rub, a scrape, whether it's tracks in the leaves. Yep. This morning, what I think we should do is I would like to get down to an area that I think has quite a few acorns yeah. and see if there's any fresh sign in there. Let's go take a look. Acorn. No, it's an acorn. <laughs> Is this just my ATV coming over, you think? You know, I think Could it's that a be rub. a real rub? Look at that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a, I think that's a buck rub. I'm gonna mark this real quick. Is a scrape, maybe it is. Ripped up. It's a, it's a scrape. It's a little scrape. And it's thrashing the antlers yeah. above it. That's fresh, too. In Iowa, you know, if you saw seven or eight or ten rubs in a hundred yard stretch, you might be like, yeah, this is real concentration of deer sign. Here, to see a rub and a scrape on either side of a saddle with some acorns is like, hey, that's a pretty good sign. This is the deepest saddle on this mountain. So it's kind of the lowest point and this is the thickest stuff we've seen, yeah. the brushiest, browsiest. I think 
this would be a good place this afternoon. Your suggestion is that sitting up high and waiting for a while is the better way to go than moving around. You, you knowing that these terrain features will produce eventually. Yeah. So talk to me about that because James is all about that. Still hunting, walking around. But you are sometimes switching it up and going the modern route with it. Why, why do you do that? I feel like our odds of success on this hunt are better sitting. Well, it's a, as good of a starting point as any. Yeah. Sit in one of those saddles, wait, watch, and just imagine any moment some antlers might come over the saddle. After gathering some local information from Clay, I'm off on my first solo hunt. This evening, my plan is to sit near the saddle we scouted together and see what passes by. If that doesn't work out, I'll be hitting the ground the next day to try the James Lawrence approach. So you've got the saddle, that terrain feature, you've got confirmed sign, and you have the acorn. So it's kind of the trifecta of the three things that seem to matter to Clay and James out here. I think I want to get into one of these couple trees there. Of course there has to be poison ivy around the trees. This is going to be my tree. There's some cover up there. I'll have like an easy 40 yard shot to anywhere they want to cross in the saddle. set up for the first time of the trip and uh, I had a little epiphany while I was walking in here tonight. This is a little crazy. Show up at a brand new place, cold turkey, spend a day learning from someone and then with just that take off in a brand new country and try to get something tagged in three days. It's not really a great recipe for success. It's surprising it took me this long to realize that. Last hour of daylight, if anything is going to move through, this is it. Anytime now. Anytime. Yeah, that's a deer. 150 yards, probably. But if she comes really close, I would take a shot. Hey, buddy. Mark, I didn't hear a shot. No, no, no shot. No shot? It was, uh, could have been worse. Really? Saw a deer. Did you really? I did, yeah. Where did it come through? She dropped down off that slope into the saddle towards me. And long story short, never saw her again. Really? And that was it. I bet she hit that saddle and just, just dipped dropped down off. off the mountain. Mm -hmm. Figure I'll go back there in the morning. Mark, I'm going to let you have that side of the mountain and I'm gonna go somewhere else. Yeah. I think I'm gonna jump on the mule and I've got a spot that I wanna hunt tomorrow. Okay. So I'm gonna leave you here. Well how about I just hit you up on the uh the inreach if I get one down. Inreach me and yep. I will be here to help you get it out. Great. I like it. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> it, man, I was gonna wait for you but I didn't <laughs> He's gone off to greener pastures, but sticking it out back here in the same spot I hunted last night. Zero deer so far. Just feels like any moment now something's gonna come off the saddle. Now it's inching towards 11 o'clock, so I'm gonna start packing up here, I think, pretty soon. We'll go see what else is out there. I know I can always fall back on this spot if need be. So, keep on keeping on. Yeah, I got an uncle who used to go sit somewhere while we were out hunting. He'd sit for the first hour maybe. And then he'd get up and he'd go walking all over the place. And it kind of used to drive me nuts. Because I thought to myself, he's screwing everything up. He's not going to see anything. He's just doing it because he doesn't have the patience to sit. <laughs> But the more I learn and spend time with James and Clay, turns out that slipping through the woods, still hunting, 
can't actually work. So my uncle might have been on to something. My plan tonight is gonna be to just slowly slip down this ridge, past that saddle I hunted the last couple times, and work my way down the mountain. another rub and then there's that scrape and then all that's connected to that saddle so I'm sure that I didn't push past it and I'm glad I stuck and stuck it out and watched I'll be right back there tomorrow morning closer to where they crossed I'm hoping they'll pass going the other direction in the morning so that's game plan I'm excited sitting here now today sitting there thinking oh man this would be nice if there's more deer why can't there won't be more deer I kind of wish I was more like my dad he was able to accept things for what they were and and find the beauty in it no matter what and I'm not as good at that I'm kind of always wanting more sitting here in a place like this. Maybe it's just what I need. I'll see if I can channel the old man. Because this is pretty nice. Man, it looks like he's gotta be 
Sears shakes right now. Man, it's a beautiful deer. Kind of a loss for words. I kept telling myself, it's gonna take whatever the mountain gave me. Maybe that was a deer, maybe that was a doe, maybe that was a buck, maybe it was just a really fun four days. But uh, today the mountain gave me a beautiful eight point buck. And I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. Hey, dude. Why are you a deer? <laughs> you want to see the deer? Ah. Look at that. You see him? He's an eight pointer. You impressed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to bring this buff back home and show you guys? All right, it's going to take a little while. Mr. Clay's got to come and help me with the mule, and then I'm going to come back home. I can't wait to see you guys. Mwah. See you guys later. Well, you did it, man. You did it. Can you believe it? I, I can, but every time it comes together, you're kind of really happy. The I, first words out of my mouth are big buck. Big buck. <laughs> that is a beautiful Arkansas public land deer. Yeah. James has a fair share about like that on his wall, doesn't he? He does. What do you think you think about this? I think we should go find out. All right. All right. There we go. I tell you what, it wasn't easy. It wasn't always action packed, but I, I get it now. I can see the allure. And I'll tell you what, I have even more respect and admiration for what you and James do now after seeing this. Yeah. It's no cakewalk. Yeah. That's a different mentality than if we were in some El Primo whitetail destination, you know. And so when you see guys that consistently take really big deer here, man, they're really doing something, you know. All right, James, you want to see her? I'm, I'm dying to. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I see horns. We got horns. Right. Got an eight pointer. All right, all right, all right. Here he is. <clears throat> Perfect horn. Yes, nice. nice. Uniform as can be. I think I'm as proud as you are. <laughs> I was so wanted you after we talked the other night. Yeah. I've admired the way you guys hunt and oh, the way that people have done it out here. To get to experience it and have it come together like this. Oh, I love it. Thank you, James. I really, <laughs> really appreciate it. Oh, man. It, this is. This I think is my smile is bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I so wanted you to do some good. So much of whitetail hunting today is obviously, almost obnoxiously, 21st century. Cellular trail cams, manicured food plots, micromanaged properties, and pre-named hit list bucks. Now I like that stuff just as much as the next guy, but sometimes it's all a bit much. This trip back in time with nothing but a mule, a mountain, and a couple good friends was just what the doctor ordered.